Hi, this is Paul. Um, what I'm going to show you is uh, a quick run through of uh, version 0.8 of the Gluster Deploy tool. Um, so, what I have uh, uh, for a test bed are four uh, Denali nodes uh, based on a, a mid June build. And I've unpacked uh, the Gluster Deploy tarball on one of those nodes. So, here's the directory structure it creates. Um, the first thing we'll look at, uh, which is kind of new in this version, is some changes into the configuration file that you can use to uh, tailor the way in which the tool runs. So let's take a look in there. Uh, so for those who haven't seen it before, this configuration file has two sections. It's in a, an any file format. Uh, there's a node section for defining uh, which nodes that you want to use. Um, so if you don't do this, then the tool will do a subnet scan to locate uh, nodes um, and then there's a brick section within the bricks um, you've got the normal stuff specifying defaults for brick path default for the volume group name LV name and then there's these additional two options that have been added so stripe unit and stripe width so as you can guess this is all about um, RAID uh, alignment for the file systems and RAID alignment for the uh, LVM for the PV So that, when those are in place, uh, effectively what it means is that when you go through and does a PV create, it will use those, uh, do the appropriate offsets, and also use those values, if applicable, when creating the bricks or the file systems for the bricks. Um, case in point is if it's um, based on uh, thin provision volumes, then those particular settings don't get used on the makefs uh, XFS command, as per the, B, the BZ that was opened. So let's just establish where we currently stand. So let's do a cluster peer status. So we've got no peers. Let's have a look at tune D. So we've got the active profile. Uh, and let's have a look and see what's mounted. Um, so you can see that certainly on this node, um, it's completely uh, unconfigured. So if I just take this across and just throw that into each of these nodes, you can see that it's a similar sort of situation on all the nodes. Just do one more. Okay, so nothing's actually mounted. So let's, uh, with the utils file uh, updated, let's do an invocation. Specify minus n to bypass the uh, password entry, so I don't want to do that because I'm lazy. And we're going to give it the deploy configuration file that we looked at earlier. So there we see it's um, read it, it's uh, resolved some of the names that it can do, it's skipped some of the others. We're using the names that we wanted to for the VGs and the, the um, brick paths, and it's also picked out the stripe unit and stripe width that we want to use. Uh, you can see that it's provided us with the URL to go and attach to, so let's throw that in. No change there, we're still doing the same sort of set of steps. No discovery, SSH key distribution, disk discovery, brick definition and volume creation. First change that you'll notice is within no discovery, so now there's an extra button. So we can add nodes to and from the, the list of nodes that we want to use for the create. But in our case, for this particular test, I want all the nodes. For those that are wondering what the asterisk means, the asterisk denotes uh, the running node. So I'm running this tool on Denali 1. That's why that has an asterisk. So this does the peer probe and then on to the SSH key uh, environment. So um, the way in which bricks get formatted, uh, devices get discovered, and um, volumes get uh, tuned and potentially uh, post-create steps are all done through the distribution of scripts to the nodes. Uh, so to, to enable that, we need passwordless SSH uh, to all the nodes within our environment. So as before, an imaginative uh, password, distribute those to uh, four nodes, 
and we're going to find available disks. So in this environment, my Denali nodes have all got two disks each. So I'm going to take all of those disks onwards. So brick definition change here. So tune D profile. So the find devs routine, which returns a list of devices, does a lot more sort of investigation on each of the nodes and returns that back into the Python environment to create a more rich um, Python model of what the cluster looks like in terms of its hardware and its configuration. One of those elements or items um, is the tune D uh, profiles that are available. So all those nodes, when find devs is run, uh, return back tune D. Um, or a list of tuned D potential uh, profiles and then th on the server side all those lists are actually consolidated to make sure that we actually present within this pull down a list of only those uh, profiles which are uh, consistent across all nodes so selecting one of these you can be guaranteed that it is available across th all the nodes uh, next call out we have uh, volume snapshots so that's been there for a fair while now um, it defaults to 10%. These are the bricks sort of settings as we defined here. So let's go ahead and build the bricks. Uh, the formatting process is done through um, dispatching an SSH task um, to each node and then each one of those tasks will process the disks pertinent to that node in a serial fashion. Um, so you've got a little bit of scale here with the formatting process. Uh, so if you've got 16 um, nodes or 32 nodes in your configuration, it will dispatch all 32 um, formats at the same time, for example. Okay, a big green tick is a good sign. Let's move on. So the next change, so creating volumes. Um, so one of the requirements we needed to, to deal with was having to create multiple volumes through one invocation of this, um, this setup wizard. Um, so this is what we've done. So we've established, this is what I've done, we've established the, the concept of volume queue. So uh, what we have uh, is a queue that will build here before we commit. So the process flow, or the workflow, is basically top down. So we'll create a rev volume virtualization target environment rev so these target environments here by selecting each one will uh, change the uh, the vol set uh, parameters that are used so uh, as a call out if you look at glance and cinder they've got a different storage GUID and UID that get assigned as opposed to what gets used for uh, for rev um, so we'll just use a replicated volume again we're sticking to two we give a directory for the volume uh, to use on, on these bricks. Um, so let's pick two bricks. So we'll have this one and that one. So I have to pick in pairs because my replica count is two. If I don't pick in pairs, if I pick in one, it doesn't let me. If I try and pick a pair which are on the same um, server, it doesn't let me. So anyway, let's have two 17 gig lands on one uh, Denali 1 and Denali 2, and let's queue it. So as you can see, it gets added to the queue. We get this summary, which tells us how many bricks there are, raw, usable. This is the same stuff as we had before, except this time we've got this, this X that we can hit. So if we decide that we don't want that particular uh, configuration and we want to change something, we can uh, push it back, make the changes, and then queue it back again. So in this particular instance, uh, I'm happy with that configuration, so we'll just queue it back again. Now let's create a Hadoop volume. So for Hadoop, we have a use case for Hadoop, and now we have a mount point. So now uh, the tool will actually establish uh, the mount point and do the mount for you and update FS tab across each of the cluster nodes. So this will be a replicated volume, and we're going to give it a directory of Hadoop. Uh, we're going to open it up to NFS and we're going to use the 8s. I'm going to queue it. We've got two bricks left, so now let's have just a standard files, distributed, generic files. Let's open both of those up. And you can see here there's a difference. So whereas before you'd get the bricks listed side by side, denoting a replica set, now they're on separate lines. So now we have three um, 
uh, volumes in the queue. When we're happy, we hit commit. So let's hit commit. This is where you go and get a coffee while it does all the hard work for you. You can see on the CLI as it's popping through. So Rev's been created successfully. And we can see on the Hadoop volume, uh, part of the 0.8 uh, release has introduced a post create step. Um, so depending upon the use case, it can invoke post create to do additional setup tasks on each of the nodes. In the Hadoop case, that post create uh, script is responsible for establishing um, the uh, uh, mount point for the Hadoop volume and also updating uh, FS tab. So all my volumes have been created. All good. Next. Uh, and that's it. So back to the CLI, let's see whether or not um, all our changes as we expect to have been done have actually been done. So first off let's check Tune D. So we asked for RHSI throughput, we've got RHSI throughput. Let's check that again on the other nodes. Cool. Uh, we wanted volume groups to be defined uh, with RHS as a prefix, that's what we have. So every brick has its own volume group. We have um, PVs that have been set up, so let's check that PV alignment. Uh, VDB. So this should be 2560k as it is. And let's just do one of those checks on another box just to make us feel good. Okay. And then if we look at um, LVS we can see that we have two pools defined. If we look at LVS minus A we can see some of the hidden uh, meta volumes that get created. So we've got a, uh, we can confirm by looking at this that we do actually have thin provisioning in play. You can see here that you have the pool size created for this particular brick. And then we have the first meta uh, LV and then we have a spare meta LV defined. Now that's what um, you'll see on rail 6.5. It's not what you'll see on rail 6.4. On rail 6.4 this one doesn't get done. Okay. Now let's look at our cluster volumes themselves. So we asked for three volumes to be created. There's our three volumes. Uh, we asked for a files to be defined. So yes, distributed, these two bricks, a Hadoop, four bricks, it's a distribute replicate volume. There are the tuning that gets applied. And here's our rev volume. So it's a replicated volume, two bricks, and we can see the tuning and the, the GUID and UID that I mentioned earlier that gets uh, associated with it. And also the tuning that gets done for the virtualization uh, use case. Okay, so we've got um, thin provisioning enabled, so let's test it. for the Hadoop volume. And there we go, the snap's been created. So if we do a snap list now, fat finger time, we can see that we have that. If I do a snap info, we can see that that snap is associated with the Hadoop volume. If we look at our LVs, we can marry this snap volume name 
to this LV. So that's where you see the association. The other thing that's worth pointing out is when you do a DF now. Oh my god. Um, for every uh, snap that you take that's currently active, you'll see a var run cluster snaps listed in DF. So let's delete it and just verify that goes away. Cool. And it has actually gone away. If we do an LVS, you'll see that 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 LV that did exist, which was the, the snapshot L LV, has now disappeared. Nice and clean. Cool. Thanks for watching.